What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to write our own decorator to massively speed up our Python code across sessions by exporting and importing our cache. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to write our own custom Python decorator in this video today, which is going to allow us to massively speed up function calls by caching them by caching the function call and the output value or the result, as well as exporting and importing the cache so that we can benefit from the caching not just within one session, but across multiple sessions, which is not supported by the default caching uh, decorator that we have in core Python. So what we have by default is you can import from func tools the decorator LRU cache. And the basic idea of caching in general is that you keep track of the results of calling a function with a specific set of inputs or parameters. So you have some computationally intensive function. And what you do is you run it once with a certain set of parameters. And then the second time you want to use the same set of parameters to call the function, you don't go through the whole computation process. Again, you use the stored result from last time. So to make it concrete, let's say we have some function factorial, and this takes n as parameter, and then we have result equals one, and then we say for i in range one up until n plus one, then result times equals i, and then we return result. Now, if I go ahead now and I have a loop, let's say for x in range, let's go from something like 20,000 to 20,100. And then I just want to compute the factorial value of x. Uh, what I'm going to see here is that this takes quite some time to do. So you can see it's not done yet, it's still working. Um, it needs some time to do all the calculations. And I can also go ahead now and say import time. And I can say start equals time per counter and then and equals time perf counter and then we're going to just print and minus start to see how long this takes. Now, the idea of caching in general now not of our custom decorator, but of caching in general is to store the results for the function calls. Because what happens now is when I copy all this and I run it a second time, it's going to recompute all the stuff that it already computed here. And what's taking so long is the actual computation. The computation is what makes this uh, five seconds of work or yeah, around five seconds of work. So what we can do with caching, and this is as simple as just adding at LRU cache, and then we can set max size to none. Uh, what happens now is it goes through all the calculations once and then it has a cache where the input so 20,000 20,001 20,002 um, are mapped to the respective output value. And what you can see now, since I used LRU cache is the first time it uh, does all the work, but the second time, it actually um, does it almost instantaneously because it already has all the results and just has to look them up. And this is quite simple. Because this calculation has a factorial runtime complexity, but just looking it up is yeah, very simple, you just have to look it up in the cache and you know already what the value is. The problem we have with LRU cache with this decorator here in core Python is it does not allow us to export the cache and to import the cache easily across sessions. So basically, even though I now ran the script twice, um, and the logic four times even, it's no, uh, it's nowhere um, on the disk. So I'm not using the cache. The next time I start the script, I have to recompute it again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write our own decorator, which has the capability to export and import the cache across sessions. And for this, we're going to import from func tools wraps, which is also a decorator that we're going to use inside of our own decorator definition. Uh, and actually, I didn't want to remove the factorial function, I just wanted to remove the decorator from func tools import wraps. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define our decorator called exportable cache, which is going to take a function. So let's use func not f because we need f for the file. Um, and the basic idea now is that we pass a function to this decorator, which is going to happen by just decorating the function with it. Um, and then we're going to have a cache in here. So function dot cache is going to be an empty dictionary. 
uh, which is going to contain input values or parameters mapped to the respective output. And then what we do is we say if OS and for this, of course, we need to import OS, if OS path exists, and we're going to look for a file, let's call it factorial cache pickle in reading bytes mode as F. And for this, of course, we also need to import pickle to serialize this. So if this or actually now we're, we're not uh, saying as F, but if this path exists, what we want to do is we want to say with open factorial cache pickle in reading bytes mode as F. And we want to say that the function cache should be equal to pickle load, whatever is the content of this pickle file of the serialized cache. So that is what happens by default. Otherwise, we just start with an empty dictionary. And now what we want to do is we want to use the at reps decorator here to say that the wrapper is going to do the following thing, it's going to take whatever arguments we have, whatever we pass to the function. And it's going to say if the arguments, these specific argument values are part of f cache keys, um, actually not f function cache keys, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to return whatever we have in the cache already. So we don't have to recompute it it's if it's already part of the cache. So just function cache, whatever is stored at arguments. And otherwise, we're going to compute the result and we're going to store it in the cache. So the result is going to be equal to calling the function with the respective arguments, we need to unpack them with this asterisk, and then we're going to just store the result in the cache. So function cache, whatever the arguments were, and then equals result like this. And of course, we want to return the result. And here in general, we return the wrapper, because of course, this returns a function, which is the wrapper and we just decorate now the factorial function with this. So in general, I can now go and say exportable cache. And we can run this again. Uh, what's the problem here Int has no attribute module, this is where did I make a mistake? Let me just check here. Path exists, then open pickle load works as well wrapper arguments, arguments and key result function arguments, result return results. So this should actually work. Oh, this is the problem here we need to pass. Uh, here we need to define wraps function. So this also takes a parameter. All right, so now when I run this, you will see that the caching works. So the caching works as before, but now we have the possibility to also export the cache. So you can see the second call um, executed immediately. Um, and in the end, now what I can do is I can just dump the cache that I currently have into a pickle file. So I can say with open factorial cache dot pkl in writing bytes mode. S F and then pickle dump. And the object is going to be our factorial dot cache into the file. So this should actually work. Let's see if I make another mistake or if this actually works. And then we should be able to Yeah, there you go, we have the cache now. And when I run this again, you can see I get the results immediately. And this makes sense for a factorial, as I said, because the, the result of factorial for a specific number will not change, it's the same every time you run it. And um, yeah, it might not be the most uh, useful use case, because this is just a mathematical, uh, simple calculation, but you might have functions which are a little bit more comprehensive. And for them, you might want to export the cache so that you can import it in the next session. And this is how you can do that with your own custom decorator. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.